Today, we are going to go over two common failure modes that have resulted in the recall of hundreds of thousands of solar panels. What are these failures? How can you avoid them? Are your existing panels at risk? Recalled panels are making their way back into the used solar market at highly discounted prices. Are these discounted panels worth purchasing? Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. Today, I'll answer these questions and more, so let's get started. Solar panels make up a significant portion of the investment in a solar system, and nobody wants failures. In my opinion, a quality panel is worth more than a long warranty. After all, companies are going out of business all the time. Even LG, a very large and highly reputable solar panel manufacturer, is pulling out of the solar market, citing competition from Chinese manufacturers as a key reason. Will the company you're purchasing from even be around to honor that 25-year warranty? Fortunately, two of the most common failures are easy to come by on the used solar market. When I purchased my bifacial solar panels from Santan Solar, I asked them to send me two panels with snail trails and two panels with cracked back sheets to do some real world testing. I read numerous articles and papers on these two failures. I've linked a few key ones in the description and we'll reference them in our discussion. First, let's look at the very common failure of cracked back sheets. The back sheet is generally a polymer-based material forming the back of the PV module. It's made up of multiple layers and provides electrical insulation and protection from moisture and UV light. There are multiple ways a back sheet can fail, but most commonly it's a result of the breakdown of the exposed layer due to UV degradation that results in cracks that can eventually lead to moisture entering the module and corroding the cell connections. Back sheet failures only impact performance once that seal is broken. Once moisture enters the panels, corrosion will quickly degrade the cells. If the module is not yet compromised, it's possible to repair the panels to prevent further degradation. I've left a link in the description to a couple of solutions for repair. The two most common methods are a sticker, which doesn't seem very robust to me, and a rolled or brushed on sealant that seals the cracks, although repair longevity is not well known. So how do you avoid back sheet failures? One easy way to reduce the risk of a back sheet failure is to buy bifacial panels. Since they have a glass back, there's nothing to break down. This is a really great improvement in solar panel longevity. You can also buy quality modules from a reputable supplier. Check the bill of materials for the actual back sheet. Dow Chemical has published a paper analyzing materials used in the market and list which ones have the best performance. So what are snail trails? Snail trails are the result of chemical reactions that happen at the site of micro cracks in the cells between the silver in the conductive paste and the acetic acid in the EVA material. Those form silver acetate, which then deposited on the cell surface develops brown snail trails. The snail trails do have an impact on performance. Based on research published in the IEEE Journal of Photovoltaics, snail trails are an indicator of micro cracks and do affect performance. This analysis shows performance reduction can be anywhere from zero to 33% in severe cases. You can see their panels with significant performance reduction also have severe snail trails almost on every cell. The damage to the cell can be easily seen using an infrared camera because the shorts within the cell result in much higher temperatures than the surrounding cells. Here you can see one of my used panels and the hot spots quickly identify the cells that are damaged. The degradation, however, happens right away in these snail trail panels, and it does not progress over time. So if you have panels with snail trails or have purchased aftermarket panels with snail trails, you can expect there will be no further dramatic drops in performance over time. To prevent snail trails, purchase high quality modules and handle them carefully to prevent micro cracks of the cell surfaces. So how did the panels I received from Santan Solar perform? Let's look at the results. I used my test rig with dedicated Northern Electric Power BDM600X microinverters to test the performance of each panel. That prevents any clipping and gives me the best results. I set up back-to-back -back tests between the snail trail panels and the cracked back sheet panels, as well as comparing multiples of each type to see how much deviation there was from panel to panel. This first graph shows the back-to-back -back comparison of the 240-watt cracked back sheet module versus the 250-watt snail trail module. This is one day's production from a full Sunday in June in Ohio. 
The snail panel significantly outperforms the crack panel at 1.84 kilowatt hours for the whole day versus 1.56 kilowatt hours for the other panel. Not unexpectedly, since they are used panels, neither reached its rated performance during the day. The snail trail panel maxes out at 225 watts and the cracked back sheet maxed out at 187 watts. Using my Fluke solar irradiance meter, I logged the solar irradiance throughout the day so we can break down the detailed module performance by plotting the output versus the solar irradiance. The cracked back sheet panel's rating is 240 watts. A quality new 240 watt panel would typically produce 89% of its rated output at 1000 watts per meter squared. That would be 214 watts. The two panels did not perform the same. The worst performing panel managed 179 watts, which is only 75% of its rated value. That would be the equivalent of purchasing a new panel rated at 201 watts. Exactly the same result I got when testing other similar used panels from Santan in previous videos. Currently, these panels are only $44 each plus shipping if you can't pick them up. That would only be 25 cents a watt, which is pretty much the cheapest you can get solar anywhere I have found. Now, let's look at the snail trail panels and then draw some conclusions on the usability of these panels. The snail trail panel's rating is 250 watts. A quality new 250 watt panel would produce 89% of its output at 1000 watts per meter squared, and that would be 223 watts. Both snail trail panels had almost identical output. They both managed 212 watts, which is 85% of its rated value. There's a couple of possibilities for this really great result. First, the snail trail defects show up very early, so the panels have likely not been exposed to the sun as long as other used panels, reducing their overall degradation much less. Second, the panels I received have snail trails, but you can see from the infrared video that neither has any hot spots, so they're clearly not that severely damaged. I have two other panels that have no visible damage, yet they do have hot spots, as you can see in the infrared photography. This result means they are the equivalent of purchasing a new panel rated at 238 watts. Currently, these panels are a little bit more expensive at $65 each, plus shipping. That would still only be 31 cents a watt, which is a very low price. Now, let's put all this together and draw some conclusions. The question is, should you bother purchasing these damaged panels? Well, as usual, it depends. First, these are not the right panels for a grid tie system that has to meet UL listing and inspection. As for off-grid camping or emergency backup solution, it really comes down to cost per watt, the risk, and the payback. So let's look at that. For comparison's sake, I made a quick matrix that assumes a medium-sized 3 kilowatt array. The first column is the module's rated performance. The second is the equivalent performance of a quality standard single-sided module. The used panels, of course, correlate to a lower equivalent module. The bifacials equate to a higher performance module due to the backside contribution, and the standard mission solar panel at the bottom has the same number for the rated and equivalent performance because it's a one-sided panel and brand new. The third column is the cost per watt using the actual performance of the panel, and the fourth column is the approximate cost of a three kilowatt array at that cost per watt. The fifth column is the number of those panels you would need to give you that three kilowatt array, and that gives you some general idea of how much racking you would need for that system. And finally, the last column is just kind of a feeling judgment of how risky that purchase might be relative to the amount of money that you're saving to put it in. The crack final panels were the cheapest at 25 cents per watt, but I believe that they have the highest risk for future problems and require the most effort in terms of time and materials to repair. They would also require the most racking to get the same size system. I would only purchase them if you're looking for the absolute lowest cost and don't mind the extra work required to reseal the back sheet or just want some cheap panels for emergency use or experimentation. The snail trail panels I received actually performed very well with only a very slight drop in performance from a brand new condition, and the difference between the two tested panels was negligible, which means that you're likely to get a lot more consistency with those panels. However, based on the research I read, it is possible with highly damaged panels to see degradation as high as 30%. In Santan's case, I believe they weed out the worst panels, so you're not likely to see that low of a performance. At a price of 31 cents per watt, these are very reasonable, and I think sufficiently reliable to be used for some off-grid projects. 
especially if you're building a shelter of some kind and would have to purchase roofing material anyway. Eh, worst case, you still have a roof. If we compare these to some quality discounted new panels like the Canadian Solar Bifacial Panels from Santan Solar that I tested in a previous video, which had great results by the way, if you haven't seen it you should check it out, I'll put a link at the end of the video. They may cost a lot more per panel, but because of their equivalent performance, they come in at only 45 cents per watt. That is still a fantastic rate. If you're building a small 3 kilowatt array, the price difference is only $420 between that and the snail trail panels, and the racking would be literally half the size, so that might even result in a cheaper overall cost. If you don't like the limited one-year warranty, you can get Z-Shine and some other brand panels that are still bifacial from Signature Solar, and they have a full 25-year warranty for almost exactly the same price. Finally, the most expensive and arguably the lowest risk solution would be a standard single-sided panel from a highly reputable company like my Mission Solar Panels that I have on my array. But at 93 cents per watt, you're paying a large premium for just a little bit of improvement in risk. Is it really worth it? So if I was looking for an opportunity to help recycle old panels and get a great discount with minimal risk, I would go with the Snail Trail panels. Purchase extra panels, check the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current, weed out the worst panels and categorize them with most similar panels together in each string. You can make an array like this one that I put together, a 3S2P array. It produces 100 volts and 15 amps with a simple direct connection to my hot water tank heating element. It can eat 50 gallons of hot water on a bright sunny day with no problem. It can also provide plenty of power to charge batteries using a low cost solar controller like this 40 amp MPPT from Bouge RV that I'll be demonstrating in a future video. If you want great value with low risk and known performance, go with the clearance bifacial Canadian solar panels from Santan Solar. I think the quality panel is more important than the warranty. Or you can purchase bulk bifacial panels with the full 25 year warranty through Signature Solar. They're often out of stock, so you have to act fast, but that's also a really great value. If you want to purchase any of the panels evaluated in this video, you can help out the channel by using the affiliate links in the description below. If you live in the US, don't forget, this is the last year for the 26% solar tax credit. If you don't have your system installed by the end of the year, it drops to 22% next year and ends completely in 2024. If you're overwhelmed trying to get all this done in that period of time, there's some great tools you can use. When I was investigating solar for the first time, I used Energy Sage extensively in my research. It's a free service providing tons of resources to help educate you on everything solar. They have simple quoting tool that helps you find local vetted solar installers. Simply enter your system requirements and you'll get several quotes you can compare at your own pace without the risk of annoying sales calls. And if you need help, they also have coaches that can help you go through the quotes and determine what makes the most sense for you. I have lots of great content coming in the future, so meanwhile, check out this great video on my bifacial panel results, and I'll see you next time.